Good afternoon, boys and girls. Today is our final chapter in the first book about the flying flea, Callie, and me. So when we left off yesterday, flea flew away. So let's see what's going to happen now. A couple of weeks after flea left, the mama let me spend the night inside the house. It was the first time I ever got to spend that long inside. It was kind of interesting. I wanted to explore and see what all the new smells were. Callie told me to curl up on the couch and pretend to be asleep, at least until Mama and Daddy dozed off. Once they were in bed, she told me I could explore, but she warned me to be very quiet or they would put me outside again. The next morning, Mama put Callie and me on the front porch. It was awfully cold. There was this strange white stuff all over the grass. Leaves on the pecan tree were all brown and lots of them had fallen to the ground. They were covered with this white, white stuff too. Crisp and crunchy, they crackled beneath my paws. Remember, Gray's a baby, he's never seen snow before, so that's what this white stuff is that he's looking at. I took a quick, quick hunt, but didn't find a trophy to bring back to the map. Allie was curled up in the rocking chair when I got to the porch. She yawned and looked at me. Why the long whiskers, Gray? I looked down, my whiskers were drooping. I twitched them a couple of times, but they still hung low. Your tail's been dragging on the ground for the last couple of weeks, too. Turning to the side, I looked back. Sure enough, my tail was hanging down, almost touching the porch. I flipped it once, then curled it around and sat on it. I don't know, I said. I just don't feel too happy, I guess. Callie hopped down from her rocker. She st strolled right up to me and rubbed her cheek against mine. Feeling kind of sad and lonely? Yeah, I guess that's it. You kind of missed that stupid bird, huh? I shrugged my ears. Well, sort of. I can't help worrying about her. It's really cold. I wonder if she's all right. I wonder where she is. She might be stuck in some tree, shivering with her little beak chattering. She might be sick or lost or... Flea is just fine, Callie purred. Birds know the way south. She had a good start before it turned cold. She'll be okay. I twitched my face again, but my whiskers were still hung down. Then why do I feel so sad? Callie rubbed against my other cheek. You shouldn't feel bad. Flea would never have made it through the winter, not here. She had to fly south. You know you did the right thing. I know, but, well, I didn't know it would hurt so bad. I thought when you do the right thing, you're supposed to feel good inside. I don't. I feel sad and lonely. I miss those little birdie claws scratching my back. I miss her yelling, feed me. I miss, I miss my flea. Callie leaned against my shoulder. Remember, I told you it wouldn't be easy. I remember, I nodded, but I thought you were talking about getting Bullsnake to help us. I thought that was what you meant when you said it would be, wouldn't be easy. Well, yes, that too, but I also meant teaching Flea how to fly, giving her enough faith in herself so that she could go south for the winter. Callie kissed me on the cheek and curled up beside me. Sometimes doing the right thing hurts, but even when it hurts, it is still the right thing. I pouted. It shouldn't be like that. Maybe not, Callie agreed, but that's the way it is. Besides, Flea will be back. I raised my head. When I did, I saw my whiskers spring up. Are you sure? Yes, Callie smiled. Birds always come home in the spring. When is spring? It comes after winter, when the grass starts to grow again and when the trees get their buds. Grasshoppers will come back, June bugs will come back, birds will come back and build a new nest in the apple tree and... And, I urged, and your little flea will come back too. Promise? Promise. I felt better already. My, mis my whiskers went up. When I walked toward the field for another mouse hunt, my tail was up too. Then all at once I realized how close I was to the barn. Ever since the rats tried to get me, I'd made a wide arc around it. When I found myself right by the open doorway, my hair fuzzed to a sharp ridge down my back. My tail puffed. I didn't run away from the barn, though. I just walked really fast. At the edge of the field, I paused and glanced back over my shoulder. Eyes tight, I glared at the open door. By spring, I would be older. I would be bigger and stronger and braver. I could hardly wait until spring. It was two days later when the house mama finally let me in for the winter. It was worth the wait. I could eat cat food any time I wanted it. In the evenings, Mama opened a can of something that smelled delicious. Callie got to eat first, but she always left me plenty of good stuff. 
There were even mice to chase and snack on. Mama really liked it when I got a house mouse. She would praise me and rub me while we sat on the couch. Sometimes I would get in trouble when I stretched my muscles and raced through the house. It was even worse when I sharpened my claws on the couch. Mama would chase me with the rolled up newspaper and I had to hide for a while. I had lots of hiding places. I took long cat naps and when I got up, Mama usually forgot all about the things that I had did that she didn't like. My favorite hiding place was in the window behind the curtain. I could watch the winter birds eating seeds out of the feeder that Mama filled each morning. They didn't see me hiding there. Sometimes I would reach out to them. I looked for Flea, but she didn't come to the feeder. I felt stupid. I missed that silly bird. I wouldn't admit it to anyone but Callie, but I would like to have my friend back on my head. I could hardly wait till spring. So that is book one of the three books that we have. So now our adventure continues with that furball puppy and me, Rats, Rats. And this story takes place inside the house during winter time. So we'll have to see uh, what Gray gets into next. Have a good afternoon, guys. Bye.